They may have made great movies, but how true are these true stories exactly? Biopics and true story movies often can do a great job of bringing amazing true stories to life, beautifully detailing some of the complexities, emotional drama, and historical facts about some of the craziest real events. But sometimes, Hollywood adds its own flourish or changes some inconvenient facts to make a true story not that true anymore. In this video, we'll take a look at some of the least accurate movies based on true events of all time, including glorifying bad people, numerous historical inaccuracies, and completely omitting important facts. These are some of the least accurate true events movies. So get your history books and let's take a magic school bus ride through the true stories of some of our favorite movies. Now, while we never take Disney animated movies to be an accurate retelling of historic events, one of their classic movies is based on a true story, although the original events are very different. That movie is, of course, Lion King. <laughs> yeah, just kidding. It's Pocahontas. Now, while Disney has never intended the movie to be an accurate retelling, there are some huge differences between the real events and the movie, singing and friendly raccoons aside, of course, because everyone knows raccoons are the work of the devil. While Pocahontas and John Smith are real people, the similarities end there, as first and foremost, Pocahontas wasn't even a real name, with her real name actually being Matoaka, and Pocahontas serving as a nickname. Pocahontas. What? What did you say? The Disney movie focuses on a forbidden love between the two characters, but in actuality, there is no evidence to suggest the two were ever in an intimate relationship, which is a relief, as Pocahontas would have been aged 10 or 11 when John Smith arrived in Virginia. In fact, historians also debate the fact that Pocahontas saved Smith's life as well, with the Disney movie being a highly romanticized version of the story, and of course, raccoons. Give me back my food, trash panda. <laughs> The Imitation Game is regarded as one of the best movies of 2014, with plaudits for Benedict Cumberbatch's performance as math genius Alan Turing. But unfortunately, that does not make it extremely accurate. The movie left a lot of information out, and often sensationalized the story to make it work for the big screen. First and foremost, the movie ignores the work of the Polish codebreakers, who upon learning the threat of Nazi Germany and the Enigma machine, sought a way to crack the code and after Germany's occupation of Poland, they quickly fled to London and gave their work to the British, which provided the basis for the events that happened at Bletchley Park. This is basically brushed aside in the movie with the majority of the credit giving to Turing and his team. Also, John Canecross's blackmailing of Turing was a complete fabrication and invented completely for the narrative. Kane Cross had no interaction with Turing and did not discover Turing's homosexuality and subsequently blackmail him, meaning that Turing's covering of Kane Cross as a Soviet spy was also completely false. In fact, Cumberbatch's portrayal of Turing was more similar to his portrayal of his Sherlock character than the real Alan Turing, who was a lot less self-involved and arrogant than the movie suggests. One thing that is absolutely accurate about The Greatest Showman is that it has some absolute bangers that give you some strange looks as you sing loudly in falsetto walking down the street. Unfortunately though, the character of P.T. Barnum as a charming figure of progress who sought to diversify entertainment and was a champion of the people is not so accurate. In fact, he often exploited those who worked for him and often played upon antiquated stereotypes in order to make money. An example of this is the way he made money off of Joyce Heth, an elderly slave who Barnum claimed nursed George Washington. Barnum brought her on tour with him, selling tickets for people to see her, despite being of poor health, until she eventually died and Barnum exhibited her autopsy. Barnum's manifest destiny backstory is also a fabrication, and he wasn't an orphan as the movie claims. He was also obsessed with amassing personal wealth and hoaxing his audiences, and it is believed that he coined the phrase, there's a sucker born every minute, although that is improved. Nor did he look like Hugh Jackman, which is very disappointing. And while Zac Efron and Zendaya may have undeniable chemistry, it is highly unlikely that their characters actually ever existed. So I guess the movie didn't just rewrite the stars, but also history. While Braveheart may have changed the way that we say freedom forever, it is also sadly another case of false history. 
In fact, the tale of William Wallace's rebellion against the English depicted in Braveheart is almost completely fiction in the movie. Wallace is an everyday man who picks up arms after his wife is murdered by the English until his eventual death after being sold out by Robert the Bruce. This, however, is not accurate. First and foremost, Wallace was actually part of Scotland's elite, and while he did play a big part in leading Scotland's troops against the English, it had nothing to do with his wife, but instead, that he wanted to keep England out of Scottish affairs. The princess that Wallace had an affair with in the movie didn't even exist until after Wallace's time, and the moniker of Braveheart didn't even belong to him. But actually, Scotland's most fierce defender, Robert the Bruce, who is the main focus of Netflix's Outlaw King. Also, in terms of historical style, that is also incorrect, with the Scottish people not using the kilt until roughly four centuries after Wallace. What makes this all less surprising, though, is that Mel Gibson didn't really seem to care about the historical importance of the movie, instead opting to go with what he found interesting and entertaining. I'm sure any historians watching just uh, choked a bit there. Ben Affleck's Argo may have won an Oscar for Best Picture, but it's not winning any awards in regards to accurate history, with it twisting a lot of the main facts. The way I approached it was to say, look, everything's just gotta be real. One of the major omissions is Canada's influence on the mission, with former President Jimmy Carter giving Canada 90% of credit for the success of the mission. A majority of the tense thriller scenes were also mainly invented for the story, such as the final airport scene. In the movie, there are a lot of last minute complications including the interrogation and the chase that takes place on the airport runway. But all these things actually never happen. In fact, the real-life CIA agent Tony Mendez said that the mission went as smooth as silk and that there were no major complications. Speaking of the CIA, since the movie's release, the CIA have released a whole thread of inaccuracies in the movie in what I am assuming is their form of trolling. Alejandro Iñárritu's The Revenant may have been a beautifully shot dive into humanity's most primal self, as real-life figure Hugh Glass, played by Leonardo DiCaprio, fights for survival and vengeance after he is mauled by a bear and left for dead by Tom Hardy's Fitzgerald, who also murdered his son. Sadly though, most of this is false. First and foremost, there is no evidence that Glass had a Pawnee wife or that he had a half Pawnee son, which is the driving force of the narrative. And while Glass was abandoned and left for dead by Fitzgerald and his companion Bridger, historians are disputing the fact that Glass was even mauled by a bear. If he had, the events of the movie would almost certainly have taken place in the summer, as bears wouldn't be bearing cubs in the winter, and the original novel is also set in the summertime. In fact, Inyartu's reasoning for having the movie shot in the winter is for the cool aesthetic, and to be fair, he does have a point. And while Glass does hunt down both Fitzgerald and Bridger, instead of exacting revenge on them, he reportedly forgave them before he joined the US Army and died at the hands of Arikara, and not after a showdown with Fitzgerald like the movie suggests, although that is open to interpretation. A Beautiful Mind may have been an interesting character study into the real-life figure of mathematician John Nash, but some of the changes the movie makes to history aren't so pretty. Firstly, while Nash did have schizophrenia, it is highly exaggerated in the movie, with the on-screen Nash hallucinating and creating fictional people, something which never happened to the real-life Nash. In fact, Nash's illness came more in the form of paranoia and delusions, and only occasionally appeared in the form of auditory hallucinations such as hearing voices. The movie also paints his marriage to Alicia as a lot happier and purer. But in reality, Nash had numerous affairs with both men and women, and even fathered an illegitimate son, something which was left out of the movie. Also, due to his illness, Nash would often be more aggressive and controlling of Alicia, but this was again left out of the movie. Like Pocahontas, a movie with mythological beasts, giant weird-looking bad guys, and over-the-top visual stylings that's based on a comic book series isn't taken to be exactly accurate. But also, like Pocahontas, 300 is based on a true event, the Battle of Thermopylae. As the Persian Empire looked to expand, they began to turn their eyes to the west and invade the divided nation of Greece and sent a huge conquering force, although the numbers are somewhat exaggerated. While the battle was certainly one-sided in terms of numbers, the 300 Spartans actually united with other armies of the Greek states and amassed an army of roughly 7,000, led by King Leonidas, to Persia's force of 100 to 150,000, although numbers are disputed. 
Although that is not to take away from the Spartans who fought, with their efforts going down in legend and sparking a romanticized view of Spartan culture, as well as leading to the eventual repelling of the Persian invasion. Although the Spartans, in fact, would have likely been wearing their famous bronze armor, as opposed to the loincloths, which are probably not the best thing to be fighting in. Feel the rhythm, feel the rhyme, get on up, it's bobsled time! Cool Runnings may be one of the best underdog stories and quotable movies of all time, but sadly, it is not exactly accurate, as much as I want it to be. In fact, while the core premise of the movie is real, the rest is mostly fiction. For starters, on the team, none of them were actually sprinters, with the two of them actually being recruited from the army. Furthermore, the characters are almost fully made up, with John Candy's character never being a part of the story with the team actually having multiple coaches. Also, while they're portrayed as being outcast and looked down upon by other competitors, they were actually treated warmly, and there was seemingly no bad blood between any of the other teams, and Team Jamaica were even lent equipment. Also, while the crash in the movie was down to a technical error, it was sadly more than likely down to a human error, and while they did technically walk the led to the finish line, the real moment is unfortunately less glorious. Captain Phillips was an intense thriller about a captain heroically defending his ship and crew, but the real-life crew members give us a somewhat different view. While Phillips is played by the lovable and charismatic Tom Hanks in the movie, with the character of Phillips seen as heroic and noble, the crew members painted a very different picture in their lawsuit against the Maersk line, saying that Phillips was a lot more sullen and self-righteous than he was made out to seem, and that he wasn't a leadership figure either. In fact, the lawsuit takes an even more damning view on Phillips, saying that it was actually his actions and failure to follow safety warnings that contributed to the attack, a somewhat alternate view to the Phillips that we see in the movie. Which movie were you most shocked by? Were there any that we missed? Let us know in the comments section below and make sure you subscribe to Screen Rant for more interesting content. See ya!